Alright, so you want to know how to be like your favorite YouTuber and win outnumbered fights in World Best World to impress e-girls, huh? You've come to the right place, buddy. But you've got a lot to learn, so buckle in. Before we outline these steps, let's make a few things clear. To be successful in this journey, one, you follow these steps in order. I've more or less mastered this after 10,000 hours in the game. Chances are you have less time than that, or it was spent doing roleplay or PvE or something like that. I mean, same shit, right? So write this stuff down if you have to. Step number two, you aren't going to give up. Outnumbered fights aren't easy, they aren't supposed to be. The chances are you'll lose most of your outnumbered fights if the opponents aren't arse. We keep learning. We aren't soft out here in World Best World. And if you do lose these fights, record them, go back and see what you could do better. Learn from your mistakes. Step three, by watching this guide, you are now a part of my cult. So press subscribe, like the video, join the Discord server in the link below. All right. Let's get ready to win some fights. All right, that would have been enough to scare away some of the casual players. So if you're still here, you've got my respect. Step one to winning outnumbered fights, mental state. Now calm down. I know you're, I know you're already spurging out. You're like, Moody, this isn't practical advice. Believe me, it is. Every single time I've roamed for the past, I don't know how many months, I use the exact same playlist. It's called the Roaming Focus Playlist. I've made this myself. I recommend you use it. But if you're really not into the same music as me, then I encourage you make your own playlist only for roaming. You only listen to this playlist in order when you roam. Now you might be wondering, what is the point of this, Snooty? Have you ever gone on holiday, you've heard a song, and then now every time you hear that song, it immediately throws you back to when you're on holiday. It puts you in that exact same mental state. Or maybe a girl you've liked showed you a song. And then every time you hear that song, she comes to your mind. This isn't a coincidence, buddy. It's called association psychology. Now, there's a way you can hack this. What happens to me, as soon as I launch Guild Wars 2, I start playing the Roaming Focus playlist. And immediately, my mind already knows what time it is. It forgets everything else. And I know it's time to go into World Best World and just start fucking dominating. If you save the Roaming Focus playlist, or maybe you make another playlist of your own, every time you load into World Best World, after about three to five days, you're going to start noticing that when you start listening to that playlist, it immediately immediately throws you in like this trans-like state where you're just ready to roam. Envision yourself when you're listening to this music as me or whoever you look up to in World vs World Roaming. And then as soon as you get in there, you're ready to fucking do business. Another thing that falls under the mental state is to follow my rules of setting a time frame for how long you'd like to roam for. The key here is to not overdo it. Look, World vs World Roaming is very up and down. Sometimes you'll get great content, you'll be loving it. Sometimes you're running around for 45 minutes, you can't find shit to fight. Or maybe you're getting zerged every single time. For me, personally i roam for about an hour maybe an hour and 15 minutes and then i'll log off that's why the playlist is only you know like 17 18 songs long don't overdo it look if you get tired of it you log off and you come back another day that's how it is that's how roaming works all right that's it we've got you in the right mind state mate you're fucking ready to kill shit you're listening to the roaming focus playlist you're out in Wordersfield, ready to go you've just run across two players now, before the fight starts, you decide which target is either likely to die the easiest or which one poses the biggest threat towards your success. It's a process of elimination. Glass cannons can be a problem if left alone. Things like Sikkim Soul Beast, Power Mesmers, etc. Melee classes such as Warriors are usually best left last because they actually have to chase you down and they also have access to a lot of sustain, so they don't pose as much of a threat. This is the most crucial part of winning a outnumbered fight. It always comes down to target prior it always comes down to target priority. Okay, I can't say. You know what I'm trying to say. Priorities matter. The fight is won or lost before it's even started. This will determine whether you succeed or whether you fail. Getting good at this part understanding other classes and which ones pose the biggest threats. You need to eliminate those first. For me as a thief, I'll always go for things like Mesmers, Dragon Hunters, other thieves. Those sorts of classes are what I'll go for first. Or definitely a fucking Sikkim Soul Beast because there's nothing worse than getting hit by a Sikkim Soul Beast in the middle of a fucking fight. <laughs> now obviously, it's best to have everything planned out before you go into the fight, but situations change. For example, in this clip, I was jumped originally by a Soul Beast, then a Deadeye enters the fight, and I decide, you know what? That's probably a lot better of a fucking target. Do reassess your situation, because outnumbered fights are an ever-changing situation. No two fights will be the exact same. Step three, using your environment to your full advantage. In outnumbered fights, the odds are stacked up against you. Using any leverage you can get ensures you're more likely to succeed. This includes using mobs for shadow steps to kite, also using the objects around you for line of sight if your opponents have a lot of projectile attacks. This is all shit you already know, buddy, but you don't do it, do you? Don't bullshit me. You're gonna start doing it. For example, in this clip, I'm using this pole because I'm fighting a ranger who's got a lot of projectile and also a deadeye who seems to be camping shortbow. This sort of stuff has to start going through your mind automatically. It's going to feel weird at first, 
but the more you do it, the less mental effort you're going to have to put towards it. It's going to become a habit. So what are you going to do? Are you going to be that sick and soul beast's little bitch? Or are you going to use that pole as a line of sight? I ain't no fucking bitch. I don't give a fuck. That's what I like to hear. Now listen, you might think of it as scummy, but as you're learning, you don't have to worry about morals, all right? People like me have to start worrying about morals. If you're fighting multiple people and one of them abuses stealth, go under a sentry, abuse that mark. Fight near your tower. If, if, if running away for five meters ensures you're going to be within your tower buff, use that tower buff to get any sort of advantage you can. Maybe you're near a camp. Hey, if you're fucking 1v3ing, why not use that camp? Use those guards just as that little extra bit of buffer. Now let's just stop for a moment and admire how fucking beautifully I'm playing this fight. All right, that's enough of that. We'll finish this clip shortly, I promise. To end off this tip, one of the most common places to fight in the Borderlands is by the South Island. This is your perfect fucking spot that a lot of people don't take advantage of. But these little rocks over here, those are perfect for line of sight and also no port spots. If you jump on top of them, let's say you're fighting a sword dagger thief or even just a DP thief or maybe a Shiro Riven. When you jump on top of these things, they cannot port to you or they'll port near you but not directly onto you. Obviously, you're not going to spend the whole fight standing on top of them but keep that in mind and you can actually abuse that when they go into stealth for example it's just that little extra bit that's going to ensure you succeed step four have a plan for the downstate game when one of your targets is eliminated the toughest part can sometimes be to actually double down the player whilst the other one is trying to revive it doesn't always go your way believe me continuing that clip from earlier at this point i've already killed two people because of this revenant i cannot secure the last down if your safe stomp option is on cooldown this includes things like shadow step stomps, maybe stomping in stealth. Move to plan B, which should be ways to interrupt the revive consistently enough to bleed out the target. It is often I will find myself exhausted for options in the middle of a fight. I've downed someone, but I've pretty much used a lot of cooldowns, so safe stomping isn't an option. And usually what that means is I have to default to going into shortbow and using shortbow 4 to interrupt reses and hope that I can do enough with the shortbow to bleed out the target. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. In this clip, had more people not shown up, I believe I would have won this fight and finished off the Revenant too. But nonetheless, have a plan B for when you can't stomp a target in an outnumbered fight. You have to know how to chain enough interrupts to buy enough time to bleed that target out while you cleave it or you know while you're kiting or whatever. The clip that's playing right now is a great example of how difficult it can be sometimes to just finish off that one target because depending on how smart the player is, while you're trying to interrupt them, sometimes they can also be putting out a lot of pressure towards you which makes it really hard to just cleave that body with this engineer he was not making it easy for me to kill this guardian and as you guys know with guardian downstate they can heal up very quickly this is quite common you can also have a lot of trouble killing rangers because they're pet resing trust me guys perfecting the downstate gameplay is really the key to winning outnumbered fights all right boys i've just given you four tips to make you absolute fucking killers when you go out into world vs world i swear you follow these steps keep putting in the hours you are going to end up winning more outnumbered fights. Now, if you wanna go that extra step, that little step to bring you that bit more closer to being me, I'll tell you what you're gonna do, like the video, subscribe. <laughs> no, seriously, if you play with lag, use Exit Lag VPN. I've been using this for a long time. I am partnered. I've got a link to it in the description of all my videos for a free three-day trial. I'm gonna make this really short. If you play with high ping like me, this will be the difference between you landing skills and not landing skills. I've got a whole video about it. You can go back and watch. But guys, if you use code Nudy at checkout, you're getting 20% off and it supports this channel directly. I really fucking appreciate every single one of you who use it. And I always hear great feedback about how well it works for you guys. Anyway, guys, look, that is the end of the video. I hope you guys really enjoyed this. I hope you learned valuable stuff. In fact, I know you did. Leave a comment down below. Join the Discord server. Say what's up. Anyways, I'll talk to you guys next time. Peace out.